Whenever I publish a review of an OLED display, invariably there would be some comments asking about BFI or black frame insertion due to the technology's formidable reputation to improve motion clarity in conjunction with OLED's near-instantaneous pixel response time. Well, the first OLED monitor to support BFI has arrived onto the market, and it's the ASUS PG34WCDM, a 34-inch ultra-wide screen with 21:9 aspect ratio, 3440x1440 resolution, a fairly aggressive 800R curvature, 240Hz native refresh rate with 120Hz BFI marketed by the company as ELMB or Extremely Low Motion Blur, based upon an MLA or Micro Lens Array W OLED panel from LG Display. And before you ask, no, LG's OLED TVs with black frame insertion, for example the C10, C1, C2 and C3 are classified as televisions, not monitors. Anyway, the BFI on the ASUS PG34WCDM is only available with a fixed 120 frames per second SDR video source. Otherwise, the ELMB setting would be greyed out in the user menu. Basically, what's happening is that the OLED panel would still be refreshing at 240Hz, but a black frame would be inserted every alternate frame for a 120fps video source, amounting to 120Hz BFI. When paired with OLED's near-instantaneous pixel response time, engaging BFI for a 120fps video source resulted in a significant uplift in motion clarity, comparable to displaying a 240fps video signal sans BFI, all without the black streaking, double ghost images, or overshoot halos common to backlight strobing implementation on LCD-based monitors. Naturally, Inserting a black frame every other frame would darken the picture, but this could be easily compensated by increasing the OLED light output from the user menu. And because it's 120Hz BFI, we did not see any increase in flicker, unlike with the 60Hz BFI found on OLED TVs since 2022. Note that activating ELMB on the ASUS PG34WCDM would disable several important features including VRR, HDR and aspect control. To be fair, even on LG OLEDs, BFI and VR are mutually exclusive, since it's not easy to insert a full black frame when the refresh rate is fluctuating all the time. Also, because BFI would darken the picture due to how it works, activating BFI would cause the HDR peak brightness to drop and the HDR10 EOTF to undertrack the ST2084PQ standard. So we completely understand ASUS' decision to limit its BFI function to SDR content. So that we are 100% clear, the BFI on the PG34WCDM is useful to increase motion clarity if you don't have powerful enough PC hardware to go beyond 120Hz refresh rate at a decent resolution. But most gamers with a cutting edge PC rig should just feed 240 frames per second video signal to the monitor, therefore allowing for HDR, VRR, and the lowest latency. At 60fps, Input lag came in at around 9 milliseconds. At 120 FPS, the input lag would be halved to 4.5 milliseconds, and going up to 240 FPS would further reduce input lag by half to 2.3 milliseconds, the fastest we have measured using the Leo Botna 4K lag tester on any display we've reviewed so far. Engaging ELMB or BFI at 120 FPS increased input lag to 10 milliseconds. Another reason to use 240 FPS and forego BFI if you have a powerful enough PC. Needless to say, displaying a 240 FPS source at 240 Hz also improves motion clarity, which, together with OLED's self emissive strengths of true blacks and vibrant colors, provided a supremely immersive gaming experience for titles that support 21 9 aspect ratio thanks partly also to the monitor's aggressive 800R curvature. Note that through our NVIDIA RTX 3090 graphics card's HDMI output, we could not go beyond 180Hz on the monitor's native resolution of 3440x1440, even though the PG34WCDM's twin HDMI ports each supported the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second, 
as well as 48 gigabits per second of DSC or display stream compression. On the other hand, we had no problem achieving the maximum refresh rate of 240Hz at native resolution using DisplayPort, so that's what we used. By now, you should have realized that given the monitor's non-UHD native screen resolution, 21-night ultra-wide form factor and 240Hz refresh rate, the ASUS PG34WCDM is infinitely more suitable for PC gaming rather than console gaming. I mean, if pushed, of course you can play console games on the monitor, but there are more restrictions than the diet of a gluten-intolerant vegan with severe nut allergy. For starters, to avoid a stretch picture with obviously wrong proportions when displaying the 16.9 output from a game console, you have to set aspect control to 16.9. However, as you can see from the pop-up notification, this aspect control setting would disable VRR and BFI, so there's no way to play console games in VRR with a non-distorted picture. Furthermore, 4K 120Hz gameplay was not possible given the monitor's non-4K UHD native resolution. If you still insist to play on consoles though, ASUS has at least provided HDRG support on the PG34WCDM through the console HDR picture preset, which hard clips at 700 nits for both maximum tone map luminance and maximum full frame tone map luminance, providing respectable source-based tone mapping for HDRG compliant games. Otherwise, the monitor supports all three major VRR formats including AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync, delivering smooth gameplay without frame drops or tearing artifacts. VRR flicker remained unavoidable in a handful of VRR games, especially on static menus, but the frequency and intensity did not seem as obvious or bothersome as that observed on larger OLED televisions. Being a monitor, 444 Chroma was fully reproduced natively without any problem, but the ASUS PG34WCDM was less than ideal for work and productivity purposes, owing to its RWBG subpixel structure which would look fuzzier with some color fringing when displaying fine text, compared to a monitor with a conventional RGB stripe layout. For the first time, ASUS has introduced a clear pixel edge function which in the company's own words, reduces the green and red fringing on text and lines. In practice, engaging clear pixel edge appeared to pad out certain subpixels along high contrast edges, and from what we saw on the PG34WCDM, very fine text did look more contrasty with less fringing, but larger text would be presented in a softer and blurrier manner with reduced contrast. Moreover, the thickening effect produced by clear pixel edge was akin to mild sharpening based on test patterns, so in the end, we just decided to keep the setting disabled. Bright uniformity was very good on our review sample, with no bending or dirty screen effect, and only some color tinting along the sides, which fortunately is mitigated somewhat by the concave screen. There are some thin vertical streaks on dark grey slides just above black, typical of WOLED displays we've tested over the years. Color-wise, in SDR mode, most of the picture presets defaulted to a white color gamut which is inaccurate, so we suggest switching to the sRGB CAL mode for improved color accuracy when playing SDR games or watching SDR content. For HDR, DCI P3 color gamut coverage measured 98% in UV terms, whereas Rec 1020D was 75%, in keeping with WOLED displays we've tested in recent years. In HDR mode, most picture settings were grayed out and unadjustable, so you're basically stuck with ASUS factory calibration. Three HDR picture presets are available, namely Gaming HDR, Cinema HDR, and Console HDR. Only the Cinema HDR mode adapted its HDR10 tone curve to max DML or maximum mastering display luminance metadata, so it should be the picture mode of choice for watching HDR movies with correct ST2086 metadata. As mentioned before, console HDR applied a hard clip at panel peak luminance to facilitate source-based tone mapping. Now, by default, the brightness value in all three HDR picture modes was locked to 90. 
yielding a consistent peak brightness of 700 nits up to 10% window size at D65 white point, whereas full field peak brightness was 240 nits on our review sample. After enabling the brightness adjustable option, you can increase the brightness setting to the maximum value of 100, which would increase peak brightness to beyond 1100 nits on small window sizes. However, we spotted two key problems with brightness cranked up to 100 from the default value of 90. 1. The HDR10 tone curve would track brighter than the ST2084PQ reference when measured on small window sizes, leading to an inaccurate HDR presentation for small elements on screen. More importantly, pushing brightness to 100 would introduce significant posterization artifacts in a number of HDR scenes we tested on the PG34WCDM, which is probably why ASUS ended up locking the brightness setting on the monitor to 90 by default in HDR mode, a decision we fully agree with. With brightness left at 90, native 10-bit gradation was very good, judging from this grey ramp pattern in the display HDR app. The PQUTF tracking chart revealed general non-linearity and some crushed shadow detail, which ironically helped mask WOLED's near-black chrominance overshoot to a certain degree. But overall, the HDR presentation, including color saturation, was better than that seen on last year's PG27AQDM. Otherwise, ASUS has implemented a comprehensive array of anti-screenman measures on the PG34WCDM, ranging from screen saver and pixel cleaning compensation cycles to pixel shifting and logo luminous adjustment to mitigate permanent OLED burn-in. There's some over-provisioning of pixels beyond the 3440 x 1440 resolution, such that pixel shifting will never cause edges of the picture to be cropped off however slightly. The screen coating is matte, muting reflections effectively at the expense of outright clarity in a brighter environment, though it doesn't turn as grey as QD OLED when hit by direct light. Let's sum up. The ASUS PG34WCDM is a solid 34-inch ultra-wide curved monitor featuring OLED's self-emissive goodness of true blacks, vibrant colors, white viewing angles, and near instantaneous pixel response time which can deliver very high motion clarity together with 240 Hz refresh rate, the fastest among 34-inch ultrawides on the market at the time we published this video in February 2024, and so it receives our recommended award. The PG34WCDM is also the first OLED monitor we've tested to support BFI or black frame insertion, which despite some limitations, is a viable solution for PC gamers without powerful enough hardware to experience less motion blur when running games at 120 FPS. The 21.9 ultra wide form factor, aggressive 800R curvature, and RWBG subpixel layout of the PG34WCDM will undoubtedly limit its appeal for console gaming or as a work and productivity monitor, which is why we are looking forward to the upcoming more versatile 32-inch 4K OLED monitors from ASUS with flat screen, 69 aspect ratio, and 240Hz refresh rate. And you can find out more about these monitors by watching our first look video here.